to part two of our Porsche Boxster engine removal. I gotta come clean on a few things in that first video that were totally unnecessary to be done when uh, detaching some of those items on the top of the motor. Let me go over a few of those things right now. That way you don't repeat the same things and this will go a lot smoother and a lot faster for you. Let's check it out. The first thing that did not have to be disconnected was this connection right here in between cylinders four and five. Um, it comes out with the wiring harness so it does not need to be removed, so save that. The next one is taking out the two bolts that hold down the B plus box in the engine. That can just stay in place, just do disconnect the ground wire right there. The other one is the secondary air pump. It didn't really need to be removed from the car. It could have been just left in there, but totally disconnected from the hose and the electrical connections. The other one is, if I do this again, I'm going to remove the axles from the car completely and drop the engine and transmission down as one unit. All right, day two of the Porsche Boxster engine drop. We're now in the trunk of our Boxster. We've pulled out the carpet. Um, we've pulled all of it out just that way. We can get a view of what's all in here. And somehow my, my uh, fuse box back here is not bolted in. So that will have to get done at some point in time. So here are the cables that need to be done. Now, they're marked. I'm sure you can see it back here. Maybe not. So they're numbered. Well, let me pull them off. So the top one, just a simple push. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. Out it comes. Then these, there's several of those. Let's get in there. This button up here, we're going to push it in and then slide that arm across. So let's see if I can do it. There you go. Just like that. So that arm, I have to push that button in. And then, bam. See that? Come and then, just pulls right out. So now we can start to see there's five, there's four. So they're numbered and you can't, they won't go in any other direction um, of ports. So you don't have to really worry about that too much. So I'm just going to get all these disconnected here. And this one down here. All right, so those are out. Next is our ground strap. I'm going to pull those off, some ground wires, put that back on. All right, so it doesn't look like we're going to need to pull the rest of those out. I think these here will just stay inside the car for now. But here's that wiring harness that's coming through that we're going to have to poke this through. This bad boy right here. So eventually we're going to have to pop this off and get in there and push those cables through that right there. The other thing we need to do while we're up here, go ahead and pull off some of this stuff. I'm going to remove the little liner that was in there. Pull all this off. And this, if I remember correctly, let me to pop those in. Pull that off, go ahead and just get yourself a pair of pliers, pinch those two tabs that are in there, and when you do that, it's going to pop out on the back end, just like that. Kind of hold that off to the side. All right, we got that done. Well, I think we're done in the trunk. Let's go downtown and see what's underneath this bad boy. Okay, we're now underneath. We're going to remove this support bar. There's bolts on both sides. We're eventually going to remove the transmission brace here and here. Not that. So that whole piece will come out on both sides. We're also going to remove the two shift cables and the bolts holding on the drive axles and then this thing should be ready to come out oh and the uh, clutch slave up there as well needs to come out also I guess while we're down here um, these longitudes there's that metal plate that should go right in here uh, yeah, you can see these are completely done 
I've also removed beforehand, I took off the uh, sway bar. There's just two bolts that come out of here and we'll drop this down. And then there's the drop link over there. That's just a simple undo that nut and uh, that sway bar will come down and you can move that out of the way. Um, what else we got? I think for now, let's get back up and let's support the engine from up top because once we move these supports, there's going to be uh, weight on that motor. We want to relieve that stress and then we can take off the eight bolts that hold on the transmission and that'll be enough for uh, day two. All right, let's go. I want to talk a little bit about supporting the engine if you're going to take out the transmission separately than the engine. If you're going to do the motor and the tranny together, um, still should probably should do this, but it's not as necessary as when you're pulling off the transmission first and then the motor and then putting things back in that reverse order. So what I have here is an engine hoist or what's affectionately called a cherry picker. And again, I didn't need to run out and buy any special tools to pull this motor. Screwdrivers, um, socket set, basic stuff. But I do have a young man who's dating my daughter and he happened to uh, have one of these in his garage. And I thought, you know what? If you're going to date my daughter, then the old cliche of, uh, you know, what's yours is mine and uh, your time is uh, my time. So slave labor. So he'll be coming over tomorrow to help me pull this motor. But in the meantime, I'm using his cherry picker. And uh, so it's not cost me anything to find one of these. You can buy one at Harbor Freight for a couple hundred bucks. You might be able to find one on Craigslist for a hundred bucks or something. Unless you're doing a lot of this, um, it may be best just to kind of put a post on social media, see if one of your friends or buddies have one of these. And if they do, um, then definitely buy them a six pack or a 12 pack of beer and uh, get yourself to uh, use it for a couple days. All right, so that there is gonna support the engine while we get doing the rest of the work. Okay, next we need to remove these bolts here from the axle. Go ahead and take those off. And that is a number eight hex head. So take those off. Put the uh, car in first gear and then that will lock this from moving. You can then break or these loose. Might have to have a breaker bar on hand as well to get everything loose. Then, once you have all the bolts out, your CV and joint axle will just come down. Just like that. Now, if those are down, we'll go ahead and strap these up or tie them up so there's not too much tension on those right there. But we'll get to that here in just a minute. Let's see, what do we turn our, let's go for, let's get that clutch slated. So right up there is that clutch slave. And you can see that 13 millimeter bolt that's holding that um, contraption up with the bleeder valve on top like you would for a brake system. And that metal line that's coming out of it, which is your, that coils up, that is the, the, the hydraulic line for the uh, clutch slave. So let's get in there and take that off real quick. Just a 13 millimeter on that and that should pop out. So there's the top of the transmission. There's a series of eight bolts around. So there's one, there's two, there's one over there, one down there. So there's eight all the way around that need to come off. Now we went ahead and just loosened them up for now. But we need to go back down and loosen up the bottom bolts and support the jack with, support the transmission with a jack. And then we can take off the transmission support brackets. And then I think we're ready for this thing to come out. Let's get Okay, next. Time to start taking off these brackets for the uh, transmission mount. So 13 millimeter up on top. And then you're gonna put a ratchet down here and just spin it off. Let me do that real quick. That then should just come off. Pop that bolt out. Next, we gotta get to that one back there, and that one up there. So let's see if we can get 
So in some of the earlier cars, they will have this three prong clip to keep this cable secure. Once you pry those back, screwdriver, Okay, so it has these spring clips, pop those off, and then take the screwdriver and get it up underneath, and it's going to pop off just like that. Just like uh, on top with the convertible top, the uh, cables that clunk down on that ball joint, same principle right there. Let's get this other one off now. Okay, so here are the two bolts that attach the brace to the transmission. All right, so these are the bolts that hold the transmission to the engine. There's eight of them all the way around. The uh, supports are out. Drive lines are done. We have the jack supported, the tranny supported by the jack. And that was ESPN. The Yankees are probably starting to play. And the clutch slave is out, so we should have pulled these eight bolts and slide this tranny. Something I've always done is when I pull the bolts out, on the uh, tranny, get a cardboard box and kind of put the bolts in pattern of how they go into the to the transmission to bolt it up to the engine. Notice that this one here should have been a triple square, but it was not. So at some point in time, somebody's been in there. But everything else looked to be pretty much right on. So yeah, that's an easy little tip there for you. And this right here is the backup light switch. Just pull that off. Okay. Okay. So now. Jack is secured to the tranny using a uh, come along strap. Everything looks to be disconnected. And we should be ready to pull this out. Let's see what's going on. Yeah, hold on. There we go. Okay. Well, guys, that wraps up. The second video in this series next video we're going to show you how to drop the motor completely out and be ready to uh, install your new motor so like subscribe and share it to your friends